Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Java 19. So let's jump right into it. Ta -da! Java 19 and I have given this the work name Agonizing Anticipation and it's doing its ramp down now the 9th of June and it has a release date somewhere in September, 20th of September, so it's a way off. But the reason I call it agonizing anticipation is because it doesn't really have any production ready features. It has a lot of things that is in the third or first preview and there is one thing that it has released, but there's pretty much no hardware for it. so. It doesn't, it's not that usable yet, but it's very cool stuff that is in here. So let's look into it. Uh, first off, we have JEP 405, which is record patterns, another preview. And we have seen these before where we have an instance of a string and then we can use that instance later on. But they have taken it one step further or even two step further. So if you have this kind of record where you have a rectangle and some points within the rectangle, you can actually use this instance of and get one of the points in the record. Or you can even get the color of that specific point, which is multiple steps in into this um, rectangle here. So I'm not really sure if this is super useful but it's an interesting concept at least. So let's see where they go with it. Next up we have JEP422, which is actually production ready. And this is a RISC-V port. And there is not that much RISC-V hardware, but RISC-V is an open source standard for hardware implementations. So you could create RISC-V ships then, and now you can run Java on them. Uh, JEP4, 2.4 is the foreign function and memory API. So they have added more into this. It's a preview for that and it's really interesting. Um, so if we look here into this, it's similar to JNI, but it has more control. So you create a native linker and then you look up the specific thing that you want to use in this native linker. In this case, we get this function string length, which is a native function in C language. And then we say that we want to run that and we will get a descriptive uh, Java long back. So that's the actual result and that that's an address. So this linker says that we have a string length and then here and then we get a uh, long back. And you see here we get create a memory section, we implicitly allocate a UTF-8 string, hello. We send that into an invocation of this string length and we get a length back. So that's a very simple, small example. If we look at the next example here, this is a little bit more involved. We create a native linker, we get the standard library from there, we can get the uh, handle for radix sort and you can have multiple uh, calls to this down call handler. So there could be more parameters there. Um, we allocate on our own heap, the Java heap, uh, a cu couple of strings here, the mouse, cat, dog, car. Then we go into allocating the actual memory address where these should be located. And we say that we want to have an address and we should have Java strings length of that address. So as many objects as this Java strings. Then we need to allocate each string, give those a specific place where we can put those and add those into this uh, specific memory address. So we create pointers in that memory address and copy over all the data over there. And then we can invoke this array with a couple of strings and we say how long that string length is. This memory address null and there's a null pointer here. I don't know where they come from because radix sort only have two arguments. It has the 
first argument, which is the actual address uh, of where you have the different strings, and then you have the number of strings you should run through. I guess this memory address null is the return value, and then you give it an extra null to end the array, perhaps. Uh, and when we have run this, we will fetch the actual result. So we go up in here and find the memory address uh, where we have the result and pick out each of the strings and save them back. And then we can see that the re result is similar to what we expect. So we should get car, cat, dog and mouse and it's true. So that's an interesting way of implementing things against the C library without having JNI. In the JNI you set up these uh, specific functions that is more C-like in, and then they have to have a specific name and so on in order to call them. And it's a little bit of a kludge, but I think this makes it more clear, at least in Java code, what you are doing against the C library. And you don't need to do any specific thing to the actual library of in C. So this is an interesting thing going forward. Uh, next up, we have a preview of virtual threads, yep. 4 to 5 and virtual thread is also a very interesting concept. This is something that has been implemented in other languages so this is not new but it's a, a way of creating threads that are not that heavy. So we don't take up that much memory or resources and so on. So when we are creating threads today, we're creating a thread which is a separate process, which has separate memory and so on. And we need to allocate a bunch of things in order to get that running. Virtual threads are much more leaner and can just be spun up multiple of them. And then the processor will handle how to actually run these and how to switch between them. So here we have an example where we have just a simple executor of virtual threads instead of a thread executor and we say we want 10,000 of these threads just go through and wait one second and then as this is a try catch it will actually close it afterwards and wait so we don't need to do anything extra here so if we want to run something concurrently and want to run a bunch of them and want something very simple in a try catch statement this is the way to implement that kind of logic. Next up we have yep 426 which is the vector API and this is the fourth incubator which means that we have a bunch of things that we have added before but in this uh, specific iteration we add more load and store vector values from the memory segment so this is what we looked at before in this uh, yep424 uh, so we can actually load vectors and store vectors when we are talking to this foreign API uh, calling a C function for instance and then we have the cross lane vector operations so we have added two more operations that should be for all vectors we should be able to compress and expand them and we also look into more bitwise operations for um, yeah bits <laughs> so we can count how many ones we have leading zeros trailing zeros and uh, reverse the number of bits and reverse bytes so that's a couple of functions that we add into this vector api uh, next up we have the JEP427 which is pattern matching for uh, switch, the third preview and what we have added to this is more of a background implementation here. Uh, so this is what we have seen before, we have a switch statement where you can switch on null, strings, colors, pointers and so on. So you can add actual types to the specific switch statement. Uh, which makes switch statement much more visible and is simpler to implement uh, when you have to switch between types. You don't have to do instance of and so on. Um, and what we have added here is guarded patterns to replace um, when clauses. So that's a background uh, thing. And a runtime semantics for pattern switch when value selector expression is null, more closely aligned with the legacy switch semantics. So, I'm not really 100% sure what these things actually implement, but I guess that we want to make this switch statement very much similar to the old switch statement. So if we have a null in it, it should handle that similar to when we have a normal switch statement. And next up, we have the Jeff 
Yep, 4 to 8, which is structured concurrency. And this is an incubator, so it's not even a preview. It's something that they are trying out and seeing if we like it. And this is a really interesting thing. When we are running different threads, and we might have threads that are really reliant on each other. So if one fails, then all of them should fail. Or if one can't really get the result, then all of them should fail. So we need some kind of way to handle them like they were uh, in a sequence, but we are running them in concurrent currently. Which is a very hard problem to solve if and you can't really see it good in any debug or anything like that. So they want to help out here. So this is their um, suggestion. So if we have this kind of things where we want to handle something, we want to fetch both the user and the order. If any of them fails, we should fail the operation. So they want to create this structured task scope and it should shut down on failure. failure. So this specific scope where you can run two different concurrent workloads that can fetch a user, which can take a bunch of, bunch of time, fetch an order, which can take a bunch of time, and then we will have both of them. We will join both of these forks together again. So we are running in uh, sequence again. And if it fails, we will throw an error. And when both forks have succeeded, we will return a response. And the thing here is if we are running both of these and we debug them and stop somewhere, it should stop in that process and we should see the actual scope. So the improvements here is that error handler will short circuit. So if one of them fails, both of them will fail. And if one of them are canceled, both of them will be canceled. You don't need to handle that edge case. And we have clarity, as we said, where we can actually see what things uh, is one part or one unit. So they are um, working together. And we also have observability, which means that when we, when we are debugging, we can see them in the scope and actually see that this is a part of this thing. So this is what I wanted to cover today uh, in Java 19. As you see, there is a bunch of things that isn't really there yet. It's not production ready, but they are trying a bunch of things out. And it's really interesting features. I like them a lot. Uh, if you like any of them, please leave a comment in the comment section down below what you are excited about. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.